Hi there, this is instructions on how to begin the awesome project in Photoshop. And this is a review of our basic concepts and in introduction one. And basically, in case you've missed some days or you need some assistance, I wanted to go through the basics of getting started on this project. One of those is that you're going to find a large image. And what I've done is I've searched for an image of a cat and I'm going to try to set this here on large. Now notice it didn't actually set it on large. Like it still says any size. And that's because it's set on this labeled for reuse, which means I'm getting hit by the firewall. So go to unsafewebsite.com, hit enter, log in with your Google account, and it will say page blocked. And don't hit back. You got to go forward from this point on. So now I'm going to go back to images.google.com. When I hit cat, now if I go to tools, it see it's not blue here, and I can go to size and set it to large, and it sticks. Okay? So um, let's say one of my favorite things, the things that I think is awesome, are cats. So I'm going to click on this cat picture. Make sure that you do not save it from here. So this is a no-no. You want to get it over here and make it big. Um, you don't have to click on it. You just need to make it big. You can right-click it and open it in a new tab if you want to. Um, if you do that, you'll see a magnifying glass, which shows you, like, this is a pretty big picture. Uh, but anyway, so I would save that into my folder. And you should have a folder for this project. So you should have your Photoshop folder. Then you should have a projects folder. And in that project folder, an awesome folder. And I'm just going to call this cat to keep it simple. And then I can close out of my extra one and then go back and continue to look. And so you're going to put in, like, um, shows that you like. I wonder if, if I say how to get away with murder, if, <laughs> if that's going to hit the firewall. Show. Okay, here we go. So I really like this show. So again, I'm going to save this. Save it on this side. Um, it may be blocking it. So like Netflix is blocked at school. This is probably on Netflix. So it won't let me go to this one. Which means if I were to click this and save it, this actually won't be a big picture. So you, if it stays clear, see how that cleared up? If it's clear over here, that means it is going to save right. Okay, but don't save it from over here or you'll get a little tiny one. All right, so save image as. All right, and so you're going to go through and save at least um, seven things that are your favorites. Things that are your favorite things, things that you like, things that you think are awesome. Okay, but the first thing that you're going to need to do is to find a background. And so in your instructions, I tell you to search for abstract backgrounds. And that's what we're looking for. The color doesn't matter because I'm mean and I'm going to make you get rid of all the color anyway. So I'm going to choose this one and save image as. I'm just going to call it BG because why not? Um, you want to make sure this is good size. Okay, so then before you do anything else, before you even save the rest of your pictures, you're going to go into Photoshop and you're going to open that picture that you're going to use as your background. I'm in the wrong folder, so let me get to the right one. Um, so I'm going to go in here, Projects and Awesome, and I'm going to open up that background. Here it is. Um, this is at 66.7. I'm going to press Control-1 to get to 100, and that fits mostly my whole screen. So this should be fine, but in your instructions, I tell you to double-check it by going to File, and then go to Pretend Like You're going to Print It, but we're not actually going to. And then you're going to turn your paper sideways. That's this little button here. Okay, so once I turn my paper sideways, if this is bigger than the picture, which it is, because, you know, there's all this on here, then I'm good to go, okay? If it's smaller than this, your picture's too little. Like, if your picture hangs off, that's fine. If your picture doesn't hang off, that's a problem, okay? And you can come down here and um, see, like, I'm at, at 100%, it's 10 by 17, and a sheet of paper is like 8.5 by 11, so this is certainly bigger than that. Okay, now I'm just going to hit done because that doesn't matter, um, and then I'm good to go. Uh, and instructions, again, are on, uh, on Canvas on that scoring guide that you click on, which has the basics for this. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do the first couple of steps with you um, just to get you started, okay? So your next instruction says to desaturate the background layer. That means we're going to get rid of all of the color and make this black and white. In your notes, which you should have sitting out in front of you, and if you don't, get them out and write it down, you should have the instructions for how to tint an image. Well, the process for tinting an image is to go to this setting first. That's image and adjustments and black and white. 
and that's going to make it black and white. And you could choose to tint it, but we're not tinting this one because this one has to be black and white. Now there's sliders on here. There's a lot of green on my image. So if I slide the green, see, it's going to make a big difference in the way this looks. Um, and yellows, if there's any yellow. So if you want to make like parts of it darker or whatever, you can mess with these. Um, but for this one, it just needs to be black and white. You're going to hit OK. And now we have desaturated the background. OK, next instruction says create a page border no more than an inch more than the current canvas. So that means we're going to have to enlarge the canvas that goes around the picture. That's under image. And again, this should be on your note sheets. Image, canvas size. We want our picture to stay in the middle, but we need to adjust our height and adjust our width. So if we don't want it to go up by more than an inch, then I'm just gonna up each of these by an inch. So my height will now be 11, and my width will now be 18 point whatever. I'm just adding the inch there. But here's what you've got to do. You've got to change this extension color, which means we need to have a color around this to make our background. Or, as I showed you in class, you can also use your paint bucket after you're done with this. The big thing is you have to do this after you've made it black and white, because if you get out of here next and you make it black and white, you will lose this color. So I can hit other here and my color picker pops up and then I can choose. So if red's one of your favorite colors, then you know, choose red here. And when you enlarge the canvas, it will automatically be red. Let me press control one. Um, oh, I'm at 100, let me press control zero so it fits. And there we go, there's my little page border, okay? Now, like I said, if you did not put the color in there, so if I went to image canvas size and just increased these and I didn't set anything, which is okay, you don't have to set anything. I think I just changed that number wrong, but it doesn't matter. Um, it'll probably just be white, or it may extend it um, and make transparent, right? So if you hit that, that's not gonna work, right? We It can't be white, because I've specifically said it can't be. But you can still take your paint bucket over here and then come and choose a color, and then fill in this part with your paint bucket. But see, now I have a big problem because I also had white on my image. So see, that way isn't gonna work at all for this one. So you're best to enlarge your canvas and change the canvas color that way. Image canvas size, increase your numbers to whatever they need to be. I just up them by one, and then go ahead and pick the color under other. Choose the color you want and hit okay. Okay, so that's the second step. At that point, I would tell you, go ahead and save this so you don't lose any of your work into your awesome project. And I'll just put awesome Tanya. All right, and when it comes up, it's gonna ask you this stuff, just say okay. All right, so now we're good to go, except what I just did is I didn't save it in Photoshop format. And look, it says awesometanya.jpg. Now that's because we don't have any layers yet, but it, until you have layers, it won't automatically switch. So you make sure that you switch this down here to Photoshop PSD. That's critical because later on, you're gonna lose all those layers when you put everything on there, okay? The next instruction is to start adding all of your images and getting them to fit. Now here's where I'm not gonna do all of that and make you watch me because I'm trying to keep this to 10 minutes. But what you're gonna do is start opening up your images be sure you drag them all in however you wish to do that. And then as you drag them in, you can get rid of them because you don't need them open anymore. And then of course, just start turning off your layers and dealing with them one at a time. Remember your navigator is gonna be your friend here with um, these huge images. So control T, whenever you're pressing control T, don't forget to hold shift and pull from the corners and then enter to sit those down. And then name your layers as you go. Please don't wait until later, okay? So name them, resize them. And you also have to transform them. And the instructions do tell you that you need to transform. And that means you're gonna press that Control T and do some transformations. So that could just be rotating like this. Or of course, you can do something a little bit goofier to it. Like you could do skew and kind of make it look a little, you know, a little bit different if you want to. Totally up to you, but you need to use some transformations. It doesn't have to be on every single picture, but I would say at least half need to have transformations. 
It also tells you that they can overlap, so you can have things that like touch each other. That's okay. They can also hang over the edge of the border. I don't care about that. That's fine as well. And then you're going to be adding layer styles to some of the images. Um, actually, every image is supposed to have two layer styles. So at a minimum, you could do, um, depending on whether your background's light or dark, you could do like a drop shadow. Just make sure it's noticeable. So I'm on my cat here. I want to make sure I can see it. I really can't see it very well. So we want to up that shadow so it's more noticeable. There we go. See, now we can see that shadow on there. And then you need to add another one. So perhaps a stroke. I'll click not in the box, but over here to add that stroke. Now we've got that little stroke there. It's up to you whether you want inside or outside. Doesn't matter to me. Um, but it does say at least three need to be strokes that match the border color. So if I am going to add a stroke that matches that border color, then I'm going to have to come over here to stroke and I'm going to have to set that color. So color to this outside border color with my eyedropper and then go ahead and hit OK, OK. And now we've got both a stroke and a drop shadow. And you might recall in class we talked about you can right click over here and copy the layer style and then click on another layer and right click and paste that layer style. So now this one has that exact same layer style. So you can do that, but it does say that at least three of your images have to basically have that same color around them. Okay. Um, and then you've got a couple of other things that you're going to have to do. You're going to add the rest of your images. You're going to add the rest of all those layer styles. Um, and then you're also going to create a duplicate. Let's say I want to use this one. Remember, you hold Alt-Drag and make sure you've named it first to make a duplicate. And then on one of the duplicates, you're going to mirror it. That's flip horizontal so that we have a mirror image of it. And on the other one that you're going to have to duplicate, and again, once you duplicate them, you can change their angles and all that stuff. On the other one that you duplicate, it says that you have to tint it. And it wants you to tint it the page border color. Well, see, that's going to be a problem for my murder picture because it's kind of already the <laughs> same color. It's already that red color. So I would have to pick a different color for this. Um, actually, I would just choose a different picture. So I'd be like, yeah, never mind on that copy. Drag to the trash can open up a different picture and remove that. But as a reminder of how to tint, I'll just do it to this one. Again, remember it's image adjustments. You go to black and white to remove the color and then you add back the color. And again, click here, use your eyedropper and you want to tint it to be, I got to find the, well, it won't let me grab it from over here. I'm going to have to do it the old fashioned way. Um, but you're going to have to tint it to be that same kind of color that's going on on this outside edge. So I'll just pull this through to try to get it to be closer to that red color. Maybe pull that saturation up. Ooh, that's a bit too much. There we go. Something like that. Close enough. Doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but there we go. So you're going to make sure that you tint one of your pictures and that you mirror a different picture. And it can't be the same one. So you'll have two that have copies. Um, then finally, you're going to be add some text. You're going to add a style from the old styles panel that has these different fancy things. And you're going to add some shapes. And shapes are accessed over here. You have a rectangle tool, which if you click and hold, you can get to more. The custom shapes is at the bottom. Up here, you can see our shapes. If you click on the drop down and go to the gear, you can pull shapes from different categories. Um, so let's say I want to put um, an arrow and click arrows and OK. And then I can just double click here and draw my shape. So I might say that, you know, whatever I want it to be, set your fill color, set your stroke color if you want a border around the edge of it, and then you've got that shape in there. And of course you probably need to either put it in front so it looks like it makes more sense depending on where you're putting it. Um, and then the instructions tell you to add a bevel to your shapes. So you're going to go to that layer style, and you want them to kind of look 3D. And you can decide how much, you know, you can add a little bit more to it if you want to. Okay, so anyway, that's just a quick rundown of some of the requirements. There's additional requirements too. You have to add some text around. You gotta rotate the text. You gotta put your name on here. So there are a few other things. So just look at your scoring guide carefully and do a good job because this is your first big project. So good luck.